Welcome to another ClueCon Weekly. It's a great day for a ClueCon Weekly, and it's a very good day because we've got Sandro. Now, is it Gauchi or Gulchi? How how do I pronounce your last First name? There, Gauchi. Sandro Gauchi. It's a pleasure to have you along, uh, Sandro. You're a very well known person in the VoIP and RTC community. How are you doing today? Yeah, doing very well, thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, it's, it's great to have you along. It's a, it's a real pleasure. And Sandro, you're, you're very well known um, in the community uh, for a, a range of different reasons. But of course, one of the very big ones is Sip Vicious. And uh, we'll be talking about that, I'm sure, before too long. And I, I know you've got a presentation, which I'm excited to see. But what I wanted to do, first of all, for the ClueCon Weekly audience, uh, is just do a little bit of background and kind of introduction around you and your work, please. So I wonder if you could start by telling us how you got involved in the world of VoIP and RTC. Sure. So, I mean, my interest in uh, telephony and security has been coming a long way. Um, growing up, I, I was very curious about uh, and fascinated by characters like, uh, I don't know, Kevin Mitnick and, and Captain Crunch, who were kind of mm. the, uh, the phone freaks of the of the 70s, 80s, I suppose, 90s as well. Right. Um, um, and um, I got myself into security through, you know, offensive security, so doing security research. Um, and yeah, sometime in, in the year 2000, I, I had a job as a security researcher. I was still 18. And since then, I've been doing officially security research and penetration testing. And um, 12 years ago, I started uh, my own company, Enable Security. Um, and what we do is penetration testing. We do security testing of, especially we focus on developing uh, testing tools for um, uh, voice over IP security and web RTC. And we offer our services as penetration testers to our clients who tend to be either uh, voice providers or web RTC platforms or vendors who develop such uh, solutions. Right, now you mentioned you'd been in, interested in security and telephony for a while. Does it go back as far as the old days of ISDN or analog telephony? Or has it always been in the area of IP telephony? It, it does, but I cannot speak about that too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. In that, in that case, we'll move on. Because, of course, uh, for somebody who's as old as me, I remember that uh, telecom security has always been an issue. It's not just an issue in the world of SIP, in the world of ISDN, right. and even analog. You know, people were making attempts to either find out information they shouldn't really be uh, having access to or to make in and out attempts to ride on other people's systems and things like that. So this this has been with us for a long, long time. But of course, the presence of most people's phone systems on the internet in one way or another has made it, uh, you know, more of a, a regular occurrence for the, the bad guys to be trying to jump in. Now, um, am I right in thinking that um, since you started your own company, and you've put various um, pieces of software out there. Some of this software is totally open source. Correct, yeah. So um, Subvicious was actually published. I published that before I started my own company. I, I was because I was always doing penetration testing on the side, even though I had a full time job. Right. So I was testing uh, uh, PBX for the PBX vendor. Um, and I realized that um, basically all the tools that I was using or, or trying to use back then, the security tools to reproduce security issues, were either extremely slow or just simply uh, proof of concept code, which was not very effective at one, demonstrating the vulnerabilities that I found. So I would find vulnerabilities by doing things really manually using a Telnet tool or something like that. 
and mm -hmm. then I would demonstrate them with these tools. And the developers for the PBX were very skeptic about the <laughs> effectiveness of of the um, of my the vulnerabilities that I found. So I started building some tools in Python, and uh, eventually uh, th these were tools to demonstrate the security issues, of course, mm. uh, like uh, SV to crack passwords, online cracking, and uh, SV war to enumerate extensions to identify SIP extensions that are valid on a PBX. And yeah, I found out that my colleagues, my penetration testing friends also found these tools useful. So eventually I released them under the name of Sib Vicious, started a blog as well uh, on the topic of uh, voice over IP security. And from there on, yeah, Sib Vicious has been open source. I also published some other uh, security tools uh, in the web security area. So, yeah. Right. Okay. And, very and, 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 and but when when you made it open source, uh, Sandro, did you foresee the alternative uses of SIP vicious that that may come about? Well, I mean, I don't think I did understand how <laughs> how it would get really abused by uh, cyber criminals out there. So, my aim was uh, to release a tool that uh, system administrators, as such and people implementing voice over IP and penetration testers could use effectively to, mm. you know, identify security issues, demonstrate them, show that, uh, you know, a weak password is really a, a huge problem in, in, in voice over IP. And uh, yeah, help out the, the good guys as such. Um, but of course, yeah, like any, any open source tool or any tool really that is freely available, it will get abused. Um, so mm. uh, there were, along the years, there were some really huge attacks. Um, in one particular case, a botnet called Sality um, started distributing uh, SIP vicious across infected Windows computers, I think. And they were attacking various different providers with sub vicious being used on uh, compromised computers, you know, mm. part of the botnet. And it was a huge problem because it brought a lot of services down. Yes, yes, indeed. And, and when sub vicious was abused in that way, did the people who were on the receiving end of the abuse kind of find their way to you, um, thinking that you're in some way connected with it? Or, or, or did that not really happen? I did get some verbal abuse throughout the years. <laughs> right. What yeah. what I did was um, I actually released a new tool called SV Crash uh, that would crash some vicious. Uh, so you could, uh, right. if you were on the receiving end of the attack, you could attack back and uh, get crash some vicious to to stop doing ah, that. This, because, yes, uh, was, was this the sort of utility that made a certain response back to SIP Vicious, which would kind of effectively yeah. kill the attack? Right, yeah. excellent. Okay, well, yeah, that, that's good. I mean, in, in a way, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in, in a way, these, these criminals kind of made your point for you. You know, you'd been telling everybody how dangerous it was, and, and I guess they came along and sort of proved the point. They just happened to be using one of your tools to do it. That's what happens. I mean, the truth is there are people developing, like people in the underground developing their own tools, okay, which mm. are more effective than, than sufficient. So this would have been done anyway. But of course, since the tools were so easily accessible, they were definitely abused by, by script kiddies and uh, cyber criminals who are not too sophisticated. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, well, uh, thank you for giving us that background. That's very useful information. Um, I wanted to ask you about what you think um, useful security utilities for VoIP platforms are these days. Would that be more appropriate right now, or would it be better after the presentation that you have? Um, 
Yeah, sure. Um, as such, uh, <laughs> we, we've actually uh, been, so I can screen share. Yeah, the screen is being shared. Yeah, uh, I, can, I, can, on, on, I can turn the screen share on now. Just bear with me. I'll pop you there. Uh, screen share interviewer. Okay, there we are. You should be up there in the top. Yes, okay, we can see the slides pretty well now. Yeah, that's the slides, but uh, on GitHub we have uh, a repository which lists security tools. Um, not this one, I'm going to click on it. Which lists security tools um, that are, yeah, that are, you know, useful when assessing. Oh. What an, what an excellent resource for a useful to know. Oh, it's called the Awesome RTC Hacking uh, List or something like that. Great. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Awesome real time publishing. communications, hacking and presenting, uh, sorry, and pen testing resources. Resource. Excellent. So I know you've been part of Kama Ilio World recently, as was uh, Fred Posner. And of course, Fred is behind the. API ban tool that's been made available over recent months. I should probably add that somewhere here. Uh, but in this list, I was focusing, or, or not just me, because my colleagues actually helped me build this list. Um, we were focusing on the offensive side of, of security rather than uh, the ah, defensive okay. on the... side, which is what Fred of right. is, is uh, doing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In, in fact, that's what I was going to ask you about, Sandra. But um, uh, yeah, please go ahead with your presentation if you'd like to. And then perhaps we can talk about the defensive side um, after that. Sure. So, yeah, Thank I you. prepared uh, a small presentation, really, uh, for this uh, ClueCon Weekly called SIP Authentication Attacks, um, where I will be talking about uh, a particular attack in, which affects SIP authentication for, for quite a while. It's a kind of a generic vulnerability that we tend to find in various different uh, solutions that are based on SIP. So the agenda is to show um, problems with SIP authentication um, and yeah, why would one steal SIP credentials? Of course, uh, the, the main reason why someone might steal a username and password for a SIP account would be toll fraud to commit uh, crime. Probably that's that's one of the main reasons. Um, uh, and once they have the username and password for say a, an account on a PPX that uh, allows calling worldwide then they might there are various ways to monetize this but one way is to um to call premium numbers uh through that sip account and then get a kickback from the provider providing do, giving you the right. giving the attacker the premium number yeah um that's one way that's an easy way and it can lead to hundreds of thousands in US dollars uh, in losses. Another way that we've we've noticed and it's been documented by by other people in the in the, especially in the cybercrime and, and uh, that area um, uh, is to uh, provide access to people uh, to make phone calls uh, international phone calls say, uh, to their back to their family at home when they you've got a lot of foreigners who go to a a, a box a, a shop that offers uh, international cheap international rates to call back yeah. their family and that might be done in some cases might be done through a compromised PBX mm. uh, account and that's a, 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 a way that they can make a lot of money as well. And it's yeah. been done, especially when it is done over the weekend, that's, that can be a big problem. Because people come back after the weekend and find a huge bill. <laughs> yeah, ne never, a, never a pleasant surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so that's the reason why uh, I think SIP credentials might be stolen. Now, the attack we will be focusing on is SIP digest leak, which is an attack that works without needing to be man in the middle, at, without needing to have man in the middle attack or status sort of thing. You don't need to uh, be able to watch the network traffic between the victim and the, uh, the server. So first I will actually describe man in the middle to uh, make sure that we understand that this is not the same attack and it does not require these special privileges. And okay, also great. what I should mention is that, um, yeah, what we will be showing is not an online password cracking attack, which means that you try password after password against the SIP server, but actually what this leads to, the SIP digest leak vulnerability, is to get uh, the SIP um, MD5 hash and then be able to crack that pass, the pass, uh, gain access to the password through um, running a password cracker on your computer, which then recovers the password from the uh, MD5 resp uh, response in the SIP mm. uh, uh, digest authentication. Now that's a bit complicated and I didn't really go into that in this presentation because it would take much longer. Fair enough. Um, and finally, in the agenda, I will walk through a, a demo showing SIPVicious Pro and our implementation of this attack. So, right. on to the juicy part. So, uh, yeah, man in the middle attacks on SIP authentication would usually involve something like this. You have the SIP client, the UAC, and the SIP server, and the attacker can actually watch the traffic. So this might be either um, a spying agency or a service provider or someone on your own network who can uh, cause the traffic to pass through, uh, through that someone. But either way, what's important is that there is no encryption happening here. So there mm. is no network encryption. It's usually done over, um, SIP is usually done over UDP or TCP when such yep. an attack can happen. All right. And based on that, the attacker can then, if they want to get the password, since SIP doesn't pass passwords in, in plain text, it actually does a challenge response mechanism, this digest mm. authentication mechanism in SIP. Then the attacker can take the register, the, the authorization header that we show here and feed it to a password cracker and then recover the password that way. And I'm going to show a demo of that as well. Okay, Sandra, just before we leave this slide, you were saying that SIP is usually working over UDP or TCP. If it was working over WebSocket or Secure WebSocket, would that make it less vulnerable to this kind of attack? If it were working over TLS, okay, or secure WebSocket, which is over TLS, then you shouldn't have this problem. Of course, like anything in security, it depends. <laughs> you know, are mm. the certificates being checked and so on? So there's there's a huge discussion to be had there, but I just right. wanted to really keep things a bit simple for this presentation. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, thank you. For the attack, for a simple man in the middle attack like this one, where the attacker is sniffing the network traffic, you'd probably have TCP or UDP SIP over over such protocols. Yeah. Shall I proceed to the next slide? Yes, uh, pl please do. Yes. Good. So the next slide is about. So I just wanted to make sure that we understand that. No man in the middle attack happens with a SIP digest leak vulnerability because I've had people uh, confuse that in the past. Uh, so here I have my lovely diagram. Uh, you've got an attacker and a victim. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen is 
in a in normal traffic uh, uh, sip traffic you would have the attacker now i'll back up a bit so i'm showing peer-to-peer -peer sip here to keep things simple i will show how it gets more complicated uh, and you can still pull off the attack in, in a complex scenario but this makes it easier to explain when you describe the attacker calling the victim directly without passing through a pbx or a, or a sip uh, mm. uh, switch so the attacker is sending an invite the victim picks up the the phone and eventually sends a buy because they hang up uh, maybe the attacker is sending a very high frequency tone or something like that, which bothers the victim and forces them to uh, hang up. And in normal no. traffic, the attacker should, or the normal user actually, should send it to 100 OK and say, OK, good, goodbye, we're done. Um, mm. But in an attack like this one, what the attacker might do is actually respond to the buy with a 407 uh, response, asking the victim to uh, authorize that hang up, that buy request. And in cases where the SIP uh, client, the SIP UAC is vulnerable, what happens is that the victim, victim's phone, um, would send a buy, another buy, this time with the authorization header, um, challenging uh, with a challenge response. So in the 407, mm -hmm. there would be a challenge and the authorization header in the buy would have the challenge response. And then the attacker can say, okay, thanks. And, you know, go and, right. go and do their attack. Mm. A more complex scenario, just to confuse you a bit more. Uh, you might have, like in our demo here we have a camellio that is configured in a certain way uh, where and and we've got sub vicious pro on one side and the victim uac on extension 2000 on the other side and uh, yeah sub vicious pro sends an invite camellio just relays that invite the uac picks up because it's configured that way. It's actually an asterisk, but uh, it's behaving like a normal uh, phone. Mm, and yeah. then it sends OK. And then it hangs up very quickly in this case, because that's how it is configured. And then what Sip Vicious Pro does is it sends the 407, which actually gets relayed through this Camellio server. Yeah. And, uh, the UAC tries to authenticate the buy and sends the authorization header, which gets relayed back to the attacker. Right. Now, but this, 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 just if I um, can clarify yeah. things from my own mind, Sandro, this seems a little yeah. bit like the invite, the invite challenge response, where you know when you do an invite, the other end comes back and says, OK, uh, I need your credentials. This is the kind of the same thing at the, at the closing end of, a, of the dialogue. Yes. Yes. Excellent. So okay. the, the only difference is that it's the other way around. So it's the attacker who is uh, sending the invite. Um, so they, if, if the victim were calling the attacker, they could do the same thing and try to challenge um, the, uh, try to uh, authenticate the victim. Right with the invite as well. So in some cases that might work. Um, yeah, that's... Okay, yeah, but in, in this case at the end, the, 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 the victim is trying to do the buy and the attacker is saying, I'm only allowing you to do the buy if you authenticate with me. Yeah. Now what's important sure. about this particular slide is that we see that this attack could happen on SIP TLS, could happen on SIP WebSocket, over WebSockets or secure WebSockets, and mm. so on and so forth. There's no need to be able to watch the traffic as long as the attacker can just receive responses, Can as long as the attacker can send the invite and it gets processed, of course, and can receive yeah. the buy and actually get to relay the 407, which is the, the, you know, the most important part of the such an mm. attack. 
and we like to call this attack uh, sub-digest leak uh, because it does leak the digest authentication. Um, and then based on that, we can feed it to a password cracker, which I will show in, in, in my demo. Okay. So if, if people at home or at work, if there's such a thing still, um, <laughs> they want to demonstrate this vulnerability, um, they can use these tools. The first two tools are freely available. I did not try them, so I cannot support you there. But we have the third tool, it's a Fishes Pro, which we're making available to our clients and uh, some beta testers as well. We started this year or late last year, actually. And yeah, so I can demonstrate that. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open the getting started because I tend to forget the exact commands when I'm when I'm excited and doing the demo. So the first um, the first uh, command is simply to try to find a zip extension. So First of all, I should mention that we have a test server called demo.zipvicious.pro. It's available right. on the internet and anyone can test their tools on it or against it. Nice facility. Can... Yes, uh, I, I intend to um, make it more available and uh, yeah, encourage people to test um, against something that works. Mm. So. The uh, demo server has various SIP extensions, and we're going to try to uh, do a SIP enumeration attack using sending lots of invite messages for different uh, SIP extensions on demo.sipvicious.pro. So I'm going to run that. Let me expand that screen. Is this screen OK, or should I? Uh, increase the um, size. Okay. Yeah, it might be useful for folk if you could increase the font size just a little. Great. Yeah. Let's try this. Great. Thank you. So, okay, what is happening here? So, okay, so it says there's various zip extensions that it identified because that's how it's configured the zip server. And one of them actually does not require any authentication. So we can just call it. Um, uh, of course, this might be a security problem in itself. But mm. in this case, we're using this for our demo. So that's why it's configured that way. Okay. So next up, we can actually uh, run the screen and run the zip vicious space zip crack digest tool. Uh, this is one of the many modules in Subvicious Pro, the new version. Um, and do this against, um, can do it against TLS and put it on TLS to show that we don't need man in the middle uh, against extension 2000. Right. Now, it, what it, the tool did, what Subvicious did, was it sent an invite. The call got picked up by uh, the extension. We started playing some annoying music. <laughs> the, the other end hung up, so sent a bye, and we challenged it with yeah. the 407. And right. then from that, we get the digest, uh, which is leaked. Uh, this is the authentication, the authorization header. Here, all right. Now, right. Yeah. So, okay. Carry on. <laughs> Do you have a question? Um, well, yeah. I, I was just. Um, I mean, I think it's very obvious from what you're showing, but the, the issue is that the victim has to be kind of complicit in their own security breach, don't they? In in what way? Well, in in that they 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 have to respond to the mechanism to to send their information to you. And I'm guessing, the, uh, well, I would like to think that the more security conscious ones would somehow have that mechanism turned off. Um, so 
Dubai gets authenticated automatically by the SIP client, okay? Because it it thinks that in this case Camellio is trying to authenticate the buy request. Right. So it so seems legitimate. There's no way to avoid it as an end user. It's in this case it's a configuration problem. Okay. So you would want to make sure that your cam I'm gonna describe the solutions later on, but in the case of Camellio or in similar solutions, you would want to make sure that no uh, SIP UAC can try to authenticate other SIP UACs. Um, right. That, that's great. Right. Okay. Sorry. Do carry on, Sandra. All right. So uh, what I'm going to show now is um, I'm going to show you the packets as well and also then feed it to the... I'm going to use SN Grab, which I started using pretty recently actually and it's, it's pretty cool yeah SN grep is a great tool isn't it very good indeed it's a great tool i'm gonna do this on, over udp so that, that we can actually see the traffic without having to decrypt tls um yeah and let's go yeah so all right so the attack worked again this time it created a file called digestleak.john that i'm gonna give to John the Ripper. But before switching to that, let's look at SN Grab and what's happening here. So the first invite, um, it work? yeah, now it works, okay. Because I changed the screen. Um, so the first invite that the attacker sends gets okayed. The victim picks up yeah and the victim actually sends a buy as you can see here and what the tool does is it says hey sorry you need to authenticate this buy so the victim right. happily authenticates the buy and sends the proxy authorization header over here and then in this case the victim says 200 okay and goes away uh, uh, the attacker does says 200 okay sorry and goes away and does his yeah. thing which is which i'm gonna do now so we have this file which we can actually move to john the ripper so john the ripper is actually um a password cracking tool that can crack a lot of different types of encrypt or hashed passwords um yeah from wordpress database dumps which contain password hashes to i don't know unix linux uh, password shadow files and one of the things that they have support for is sip uh, uh, digest um, similar to HTTP digest authentication as well. Right. So we can run that and give it the file name that we created. Oh, I should show the file as well, the contents of the file. So these are the contents of the file, which are, is the format that John the Repair expects, okay? Mm. I just leak or John. And of course, it's, I chose a very cheap and easy password so that I don't have to let you wait for half an hour. Um, uh, the right. password is actually 2000, just like the extension, which unfortunately uh, can can happen. It used to happen very yeah. often in the past. Nowadays, things have somewhat changed. I'd like to think mm. thanks to security tools, <laughs> like some <simple issues>. wishes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's, I I think that's my demo. Um, I can. Yeah, do great. Uh, yeah. Do you have I any think questions that, about that, the demo itself? No, that I, I think the demo was excellent and showed you know exactly what you were talking about. Good. Good. Um, so yeah, how do we fix this stuff? Because we don't only break it, right? I mean, we don't usually fix things so much at enable security, we usually break things. But we have to suggest uh, <laughs> what can be done. Otherwise, Indeed. it's a depressing world. <laughs> so um, for SIP routers, uh, SIP 
switches and similar solutions, SBCs, you might want to make sure that you don't uh, relay uh, 401 and 407 responses from SIP UACs. They, have, they usually have no reason, uh, SIP, SIP clients, SIP phones, to, uh, mm. to authenticate uh, you know, incoming uh, calls. Usually it's done the other way around. Yeah, and Sandra, so, can, can I ask, would it be legitimate to try and um, configure the UACs themselves not to send these responses, or, or would that be breaking part of SIP's natural behavior? It would, especially. So what I've seen is that the UACs themselves, which is um, the UACs themselves, I wanted to have a slide about the UACs. Um, some of them, they don't respond, respond to um, a challenged buy when right. doing peer-to-peer -peer SIP, okay? But if you're passing through a SIP switch, then you want to be able to authenticate to be able to authenticate your buy and your invite and everything else, right? Because yes. um, SIP switch might require that. Um, mm. So it's not that easy. Right. But yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I've uh, I've tested uh, soft phones and hard phones and we found this problem everywhere uh, back in the mm. days and it still exists but soft phones some of them have addressed this um i tested zyper recently like yesterday and it doesn't seem to be vulnerable anymore but i think it used that is to pretty be. recent sandro in recent tests that one is very recent yesterday yes 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 um, but I think most uh, soft phones used to be vulnerable um, back when I first found it with, with this vulnerability, mm. which was quite a while ago now. Yeah, and, and understandably, uh, yeah, because... phones especially, we still find uh, that they are vulnerable to this. And sometimes right. you can simply call them even not even directly, not through a SIP router, which is which has to be vulnerable itself. And you get the uh, the hash and then you can do password cracking so that's that can be a major problem in some cases mm. great well thank uh, you yeah. and i think of course for sip uacs you need to test them right and that's of course what we mm. do so <laughs> if you're a vendor you know and uh, have legitimate reason to ask us for a sip vicious pro beta license go ahead and, mm. and do so. Great stuff. Yeah, so we've seen a bit of uh, man in the middle and I tried to make sure that no one comes along and tells me that SIP digest leak vulnerabilities are the same as man in the middle attacks. <laughs> thanks, thanks very much, David, for the invite. And uh, I want to take, thank Alfred as well, my colleague who's always there helping me out with these things and developing subvicious and, and so on. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sandro, for coming along. I'm just going to take you off screen share and put you uh, back in the big picture now. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure to have you along. And before you go, I, I did want to ask you just briefly about the defensive side. Um, you know, things like fail to ban and, and um, API ban come to mind. Are there any other um, software projects or products that you're aware of that, that you as somebody on the pen testing side of things think are a good thing for people to implement? Well, I mean, I've seen effective use of um, Camellio and similar solutions, SBCs as well, um, mm. that can be configured to address some of these issues. You know, I always had a bit of a conflict of interest in, in this sort of area because um, I'd like to see the, uh, the vulnerable solutions fix their code rather than right. match them with a 
another device in front of it that might add new code base that can be attacked. Okay, so this this has in the web world, not the the zip world. Uh, there's web application firewalls, and I've argued yeah. against them quite a bit because they can really make things worse. I I, I understand the exact point you're making you're, you're quite right and, and of course if people are mounting these utilities on the same machine that's extra processing load for devices that are uh, sorry for services that are probably relying on that same processor for VoIP uh, or even video and so you know potential yeah. compromises there that's a, yeah. a good angle have denial uh, of service easily uh, from your security solution so it depends of course if some solutions are really good and efficient and have uh, are modular and then you can really you know uh, make sure that you don't introduce a huge attack service just to cover some security issues <laughs> yes yes indeed this is one of the reasons why i liked api ban uh, is of course it doesn't let the bad guy in the first place some of these uh, security um apps if you like they let the bad guy in and let the bad guy fiddle about on your system and try and pick up what he's doing and then get him out, whereas API ban stopped in the first place. Well, Sandro, thank you very, very much for coming along. It's been a pleasure to have you. And I can see your email address on your little uh, banner, your lower third there, sandro at enablesecurity.com. And would it be enablesecurity.com that people would go to if they were looking for that uh, um, beta license for Sipfishers Pro or would... Or is there a dedicated website? Uh, it's subvicious.pro. I I have sent you the, the links by email already. Great. Yeah. So, okay. We'll make sure those go okay. in the uh, YouTube description for this video. Okay. In that case, it only remains to, for me to say thank you very, mu very much, Sandro. It's great having you along. Thank you for giving of your time today. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at, at some further event whether it's online or in real life uh at some stage later on thank you so much looking forward thank you david bye-bye